Okay, let's get started. So we did open up the AMA chat, so if you have anything you want to say, go feel free to chat in the text channel. Um, a reminder that if you want to ask your question, use the ask command. Um, the command is pinned in the chat channel. Hey, um, just want to, wait, can everyone hear me real quick? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, are we, are we ready? I know I just kind of like... Yeah, to okay, so okay. Just, we'll just have you guys do the intro first. So your name, pronouns, college, your year, your major, and anything else you want to say. Um, so if you want to go ahead and start. Cool. All right. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Kylie. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And um, I'm an incoming sophomore transfer student at USC, the University of Southern California. But I finished my first year down at the University of Arizona, not ASU, um, but <laughs> could answer some questions about ASU if you have them. But that is not where I went to school. Um, and my major, I am a theater major slash acting major. So if you have any arts-based questions, any audition-based questions, or even just questions about like extracurriculars about that, I'm happy to answer them. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Pi. Um, I am, I use he, him, his pronouns. Uh, I go to Yale College. I am a second year student, uh, incoming second year student, uh, and I and a math computer science major. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So um, we do have a lot of questions, so I'll just get right into it. Um, we want to, I want to talk about this, so just seeing at both your colleges first. Um, so do kids at your school have, um, are they really involved in the social scene? Um, how is the social scene at your school? Do kids try to have fun and party and so on? Yeah. Um, so I feel like social scene is big at a lot of schools, definitely not every single school. Um, both of my schools are kind of big into the social scene and that also has a lot to do with like sports. Um, so both of my schools are in, you know, the Pac-12. So there's a lot of parties for like football and tailgating and everything like that. But you definitely do not have to do parties. You definitely do not have to be in Greek life in order to go to parties. Um, and social scene can really just mean like clubs and hanging out with friends. So don't feel like you have to party. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And I, th I think at Yale specifically, like, um, I don't know. People might have like a, a misconception that like you know it's an Ivy. People are all nerds. We don't party, but like honestly, the social scene here is like pretty active. There's like um, th there's a nightclub called Toads, um, and every Wednesday we there's this thing called Woads where like uh just it's just like five dollars for entry, and then like yeah, that happens every week, and it's like pretty big, um. And, but, but but yeah, the social scene's honestly pretty active here as well. Um, parties happen all the time. I don't personally go to them. I'm not really that kind of person. But you know, if that's your cup of tea, you know, it's it's satisfied here. Great to build off that. Um, how, do you guys have any tips to get over the social scene anxiety? How do we get over their social anxiety? Um, if you have any tips. Yeah, so I think especially as an incoming first year student, and in my case specifically as a transfer student, I'm basically redoing my first year. Um, I think there can be a lot of anxiety about making friends and seeing who you're going to hang out with for, you know, this time of college. But definitely don't feel like the people that you meet on the first day are going to be your friends for life. Don't you don't have to feel that way. That certainly can be the way. But um, my biggest tips would honestly just be to talk to people. I mean, everyone is going to be in the same boat as you. Everyone's trying to make friends. So, you know, just knock on some doors, go to a lot of clubs. That's kind of the best way that you can make friends at first. Yep, 100% agreed. And, and also, I think a, a big thing is you need to, like, not put too much pressure on yourself to be, like, perfect and think that everything you say matters. Every every social inter interaction you have is, like, everybody's going to remember what you did for the rest of their lives. Like, is you have to put a lot less pressure on yourself and just, just, just put yourself out there. Just, just kind of vibe, you know? 
like th- that's that's I think one thing that I personally really had to get over is just the the pressure of being trying to be too perfect on the first go. Like y- y- you really just have to. I know, I know, it's really cheesy. Just just be yourself and just just talk to people. <laughs> Great, and um, to can you can continue that? Um, how did you make your friends during the first year? Um, are you still friends with them now? Um, I actually took my own advice and the like first week of classes is basically move in week. And, you know, everyone has their doors open. People are always trying to meet people, go to lunch together, stuff like that. So I literally kept my dorm room door open for that entire week. And I just talked to people who walked by. I knocked on doors and I actually made my best friends by taking out my trash. So I was taking out my trash one day and I ran into this group of girls. They seemed kind of cool and they became my best friends. So definitely just put yourself out there. Don't feel like you have to make any big grand gestures. Just be yourself. Uh, I met my, uh, my, my current main friend group um, through a trivia night that was held by a uh, um, by some school officials here. Um, we named ourselves the Kidney Thieves. Um, I'm not going to have any context for that name. Uh, and yeah, we've been just just hanging out ever since, and it's been great. Um, I I also like made, made some friends at the start of the year. I think I think I I really tried to force myself into the party scene, like in, in like September, October, and then that didn't really work out. And like, it, it's okay. It's okay. Like. I mean, sure, it's a little disappointing. Like the friends I made during that time, like I'm not really friends with anymore. But like, it, it's it's okay. There's like plenty of people to hang out with. So, yeah. Great, and it sounds like there's a heavy social scene at both schools. So, how do you guys make the time between your studies and your social life? I definitely feel like I have this question a little bit easier since I'm a theater major. Um, so. I don't have that rigorous of a course load, but I am involved with a lot of extracurriculars. So that kind of doubles in a way as both my social time and my academic time. Um, So that's a great way to get involved. But other than that, I love using Google Calendar. Google Calendar saves my life. If it's not in the Google Calendar, it's not happening. So definitely find a system that works for you in order to best manage your time. And yeah. And to reinforce that, find a system that works for you. Uh, probably, I did not find a system my first semester, and that was an awful semester. Um, <laughs> I uh, would spend hours on sets and like, procrastinate on everything and forget about assignments and yeah just kind of bond my finals um that was not a great period of my life mostly because like you know classes were hard and i was i felt like i was under pressure all the time but also like yeah yeah when when you don't plan well like saying no to like your friends like every single time they ask you if you want to hang out just sucks so, so, so you really do have to plan ahead at least a little bit. Like even second semester wasn't too too like um, forward thinking in that like I I I wasn't really planning ahead more than like a few days at a time. But even then, it was so much more enjoyable because like I could actually say, "Hey, wait, I actually do have time. I I I can probably finish my key set because I actually planned it out today." Um, <laughs> So, so yeah, de- definitely, definitely pl- find a system, like actually have a system and don't make that system be like, I'll just wing it. it just have it written down somewhere. Perfect. And I want to move on to the residential living part of this AMA. So can you guys talk about um, how students on campus um, are when it comes to dorming or eating on campus? This is going to be more specific to the University of Arizona since that's where I lived. But um, for us, you as a freshman, you are practically required to dorm. Um, it's not a hard requirement, but they kind of really push you in that direction. Um, but I lived in the Honors College, so I actually had 
kind of the nicest dorms on campus. But um, honestly, I thought the biggest or like hardest part to adjust to would be like living with another person for the first time besides, you know, my family. Um, So I guess for that, I would mostly say just try to pick someone that you know, you don't have to be best friends with them. You just have to live really well together with them. So find someone who, you know, is on your same schedule and has the same cleaning habits, everything like that. Mm-hmm. This is, yeah. So, so, so at Yale, let's see. We have, uh, you're, you're forced to live on campus for your first two years. Um, you get sorted into these residential colleges where, like, that's usually a lot of your main friends where you're you're going to make a lot of your main friends unless i know you you purposely like seek out people from other colleges but um yeah so here like ooh, sorry my brain short circuited for a moment there uh in, in terms in terms of food each each residential college does have its own dining hall so yeah you go there for food like i, I for a while i, I think I always felt pressured to like find other people to eat with, and I think that that actually is not necessary. I, I think um, uh, e- eating alone is actually like kind of underrated. <laughs> um, you, you get done with it a lot faster. <laughs> maybe, maybe from, from a utilitarian standpoint, it's actually like not that bad. Um, but I, I don't know. At least, at least here, I, I don't plan on living on campus. Um, soon to just because it's it's annoyingly expensive to like um bu- to to get on the meal plan and also like pay an obscene amount of money to live in a glorified apartment basically um yeah <laughs> perfect and could you guys elaborate more on living with the roommate um do you guys have any horror stories the roommate um any tips on how to get along with one um just an experience with the roommate yeah um thank goodness i do not have any horror stories for you sorry about that um but i actually my roommate so let me back up a little bit the way that our dorms were laid out was in a suite style so there were you know two people sharing one bedroom connected by a private bathroom to two people sharing another bedroom um so my roommate the person i actually like shared the bedroom with Um, is actually one of my best friends from high school. So I went to my state school. So it was really nice to kind of have her there, Um, especially during, you know, this is a scary time where you're transitioning, you're meeting tons of new people, and you don't kind of know where you stand at first. So it was really nice for me to have, um, like, someone from home that I could lean on. But for my other roommates, I definitely recommend looking on social media. Um, Usually schools will have, like, a insert college here, class of 2020, you know, whatever, 25, 26, um, Instagram page, Facebook group, anything like that. And people are always looking for roommates. And then you kind of have a way of, um, you know, seeing what they look like and who they are and how you'll mesh well together. Mm-hmm. I don't have any, uh, horse or ro- roommate horse stories either, which is, I'm very thankful for. My roommate's great. I'm still like living with him, uh, off campus during the summer because I'm doing research here. Um, I mean, there was one time when I was locked out of the room and he was like really, really asleep and I had to like, re- and even when I knocked on the door really loudly, he, he slept right through it. So I had to call Yale security to get back into my room. And that was, that was not a fun experience because it was like 3.30 AM. I think he also slept through the Yale security thing, which is very impressive. Um, that was Learn from fun. Pi, not- keep your key on you at all times. Yes. Keep your key on you. <laughs> um, or, or either that or just leave your door unlocked if you're more comfortable with that. Um, yeah, uh, but, but, um, I, I, I think at Yale, you, you, yeah, you don't really get to choose your roommate. So, um, good luck is, is the only, um, is the only advice I have. And I, I mean, just make sure you set your boundaries at the start of the year. Know what, what like, expectations both of you have, uh, and then you, you'll, you'll be fine. And if I could just uh, quickly jump back there, Jackie, um, Yale's weird, apparently, but a lot of schools also have, when you apply for housing, they have surveys. 
So you fill out your own survey saying, this is what time I wake up. This is what time I go to bed. This is how clean, like how clean I want my room, anything like that. And people, like the school will match you up with roommates. So you could also just do it that way. Mm -hmm. I I think that's how we did it too. Um, There is just a survey saying, um, uh, how loud do you like your roommate? Uh, How loud do you like your room? Um, Like, do do you, do you want to hold parties often and stuff like that? And, but like the, the final decision at Yale is, yeah, the computer decides. I'll heal the computer overlord. Yes, thank you. Um, you yeah, actually took the survey recently, so it's just about your social scene, your living preferences. Um, but yeah, uh, we can move on to the academic part of this. So um, what does your typical schedule look like? So the best thing about college is that you get to pick what your schedule looks like. Um, Personally, I was stuck having a a 9am lecture my first semester because that was the only time that my required lecture was offered. But um, yeah, so you get to pick the schedule that works best for you. If you are the type of person who, as soon as you wake up in the morning, you are ready to go, you can pick an 8am class and then be done with class at noon. I definitely don't recommend that. Never take an 8am class, but to each their own. Um, So my schedule personally, we usually started between like 9 to 10 a.m. And then I had some pretty big breaks in between my classes so that I could get some food or go back to my dorm, anything like that. Um, And then I was usually done with classes by three at the latest. But honestly, pick the schedule that works best for you. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, definitely... Uh, also, don't like overestimate what you can do. I think I pushed myself a little too hard last semester. Uh, I was taking five and a half credits, which um, normally the recommended amount is like four or four and a half. Um, it was hard. It was challenging. I, I still got through it. Um, but like, uh, <laughs> to reiterate the 9 a.m. lecture thing, like, you wake up later than you think. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. I, I consistently woke up at like about 7, like 6.45 for high school, and now I genuinely cannot get out of bed before 9.30. Um, and and for 9 a.m. lectures last semester, I, I legitimately just slept through all of them uh, and watched the lecture recordings online, which is a strategy I do not recommend because I learning in person works infinitely better than learning through a recorded lecture. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you get to choose your own classes. It's great. Sometimes you do get forced into the early classes, but that's something you really do just have to deal with. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I I had like two light days and two um, like less light days. Um, the less light days, I'd have like three or four classes back to back, which is not ideal. I, in fact, I didn't think I had time for lunch, which, yeah, again, not ideal. Um, Fridays, Fridays were nice and chill. And if you can get away with not having classes on Friday, that's that's wonderful. Go you. Um, and I would strongly recommend it because it is very nice. Um, I did not have that luxury. Uh, I had lab from noon to three, which honestly wasn't too bad, except it like conveniently intersected perfectly with lunchtime at the dining halls. So I had to purchase food afterwards. That was a little painful because money. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it, it was fun. Yeah, and for those classes that you guys took, did you guys? How did you guys go about um, choosing those classes? Did you use anything like rate my professor? Um, and if you did, was it accurate? Yeah. So um, I definitely recommend using rate my professor, but read the actual reviews. Don't just look at the number because. I mean, let's be let's be real here. If you're in applying to college, you're most likely to be a more rigorous student who can handle a higher course load. Um, and there are some people who rate professors poorly simply because they have essays or they give actual work. Um, so I would definitely recommend actually reading the reviews to see is this actually a bad professor or was this just a student who didn't want to work? Um, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I am definitely those students, but. Um, how I actually picked my classes was that at the beginning of the year, before we actually went to school, um, you meet with your academic advisor. And I don't know how it is at other schools, but they basically told me what classes I should take for my first semester. From there, it's kind of up to you to say, okay, 
I want to focus more heavily on my GEs and get those out of the way, or I want to do more of my major based classes and save GEs for later. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how that works. Yeah, course selection here. I, I mean, I, I think people just, especially for university, you just kind of choose whatever. Um, there are like a few general um, uh, general things that you have to stick to. We, we, we have our own um, uh, internal system for, for course ratings. And I think some Yale students made uh, this site called Course Table where, um, yeah, you can basically just plan out your own schedule. It's really nice. Um, and I think one thing to be very cautious about is for higher level classes, um, the ratings will be deflated in terms of workload because you will have people who are mainly that major taking that class. Um, I made this mistake with um, uh, computability and logic, the class, because it, it was rated as like a two point something out of five, which isn't great. I mean, which is great. It's not supposedly a low workload, but it was hard. It was hard. It was not fun. So uh, yeah, just, just, just keep in mind the, the, the like, I, I guess the, the population of people who would take the class and review it too when, when you're looking at course reviews. Great. And speaking of workload, um, how much homework did you guys end up having? Was it more or less compared to high school? I feel like I am not the right person to ask for this because I am a theater major. Um, all those stereotypes are true. I basically had no homework. Um, so personally, my course load was a lot lighter than it was in high school. In high school, I took all honors and AP classes. Um, but yeah, I would say that depending on your, that's completely dependent on your major. Yep, because I have a much heavier workload in college. Um, yeah, there were some nights where I would be up until 3 or 4 a.m. doing uh, problem sets, and that was not fun. But uh, once you manage your time well, I, I think it, it, it gets better. Um, yeah, and, and I, I wasn't particularly slacking during high school either. Um, I, I did take way too many classes that were than, than healthy for me. Um, yeah, uh, it's just managing your time when you have tons of classes gets hard. And I think once you if you can get that down, the workload doesn't isn't that daunting. Yeah, great. And I want to jump back to actually dorming. Um, it's in your dorms, did you guys have any furniture or do you have any like essentials that you recommend people pack to bring to college? Okay. If, um, so most schools will give you like the bed and the desk um, and as well as like you'll have a closet usually. Um, I personally had like dressers underneath my bed. If you don't have those, if your school does not provide those, I definitely remind, like recommend it. I think under the bed storage is the best possible storage solution that you could have. Um, as for essentials, definitely like a Brita filter, like for your mini fridge, because you do not want to walk down to the dining hall at, you know, whatever midnight if you're like pie and still working. Um, but other than that, um, don't forget to bring scissors. A lot of people forgot scissors on my floor. I was the only person that had scissors. Um, I also recommend having like a mini sewing kit. That's just so helpful if you learn how to, you know, if a button falls off of a shirt or if you need to sew a hole in something, like it's always just nice to have. Um, other than that, what other essentials do I recommend? Yeah, honestly, just the most amount of storage solutions that you can and, oh, a toolkit. Please bring a toolkit because if you're building furniture, if you're building anything, you need it. So. Mm -hmm. I yeah, want to re really reinforce that last point. Um, I had to build an IKEA uh, a drawer, uh, not a drawer, a, a, a shelf, um, and I didn't have any tools with me. Uh, so we ended up using uh, one of my water. I got a free water bottle for for some uh, Asian American cultural thing. So uh, my friend and I just used that, <laughs> and uh, we really dented it. And I'm still using that water bottle today. And you can see all the dents in it from when we uh, hammered in this IKEA shelf. <laughs> It's it's pretty funny. Um, I, I can't think. Oh oh, I definitely got a mattress top. But the mattresses can get. The, the, I'm not sure what other schools are like. I know for sure that the mattresses here at Yale suck ass. So uh, definitely get a topper. Um, and it it so you can like sleep well. Get get a good one too. Don't get a cheap like three dollar one like I did. Like splurge a little bit on that because you know good sleep is is a good life. 
Um, there was a jokes joke idea I had um, that I, I don't think ended up like really being that important. But um, I I, uh, I got like this uh, twenty five dollar gift card um, and like uh, an empty like uh, card to go along with it. Um, in case, like, I, I forgot somebody had some major event, like a birthday or something, and I could just give it to them as, like, an emergency gift. Um, thankfully, I'm not that, I, I, I didn't, never had to use it, but, um, uh, that, that felt like a good idea to me. I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, and I heard, um, Pi mention the Asian American Cultural Center. Could you guys talk about the extracurricular opportunities at your school? Do you guys have trouble finding something to do after your classes and so on? So that is totally up to you. Um, most schools, I think pretty much all schools actually, will have some sort of club fair at the beginning of the year. And they'll just have tables and tables and rows of different clubs, extracurriculars you could join. And most schools, if they don't have what you're looking for, you can make it. Um, so for me personally, I actually had a lot of like rehearsals after my classes. So I wasn't necessarily super involved with like clubs and stuff like that, unfortunately. But um, yeah, there's also usually some sort of ver version of like kind of like handshake for specific schools where you can actually look and see online the list of clubs join that way, everything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's like an overabundance of, of like extracurriculars here. Like um, I definitely thought I would do more than I am currently doing now. Like if, if you look at my list, I had, I had like so many things I wanted to do. I wanted to join like the Watch Engineering Club, like the, the Yale Symphony Orchestra. Um, yeah, just, just every, everything I could find. And then like that just slowly got whittled down to like one or two commitments that I actually had the time for. Um, but you'll definitely find your own cup of tea. It, it, it's, there's just so many clubs. And if you don't find your club, you can just make your own. Uh, you can apply for funding. You can like set up meeting times. I do want to set up like a little ice cream club where we make ice cream every Sunday and call them ice cream Sundays. And that, that's, that's been in the plans for a while now. I, I don't think I'll ever get to it. Um, Jackie, you're free to steal that idea if you want. I, I don't care. <laughs> um, yeah, that sounds a great, like a great idea. Maybe we can collaborate in the future. But uh, I want to go jump back to classes. And could you share your favorite class? How did it come to be? And um, yeah, how did you find it, basically? So oh, my favorite class was a first semester class, actually, and it was a gen ed requirement, um, or it satisfied a gen ed requirement, and it was Greek mythology. And um, I was kind of one of those nerds in like middle school. I didn't read the Percy Jackson series, but I loved Greek mythology. I loved the idea of it. So I was like, okay, you know, this sounds, this sounds cool. I'll take it. It satisfies my requirement, everything like that. But um what really sold me was going back to rate my professor. Everyone gave this professor five-star reviews. He was so funny. He was really engaging and he made this lecture just incredible. And he also canceled my final because Michigan beat Ohio state. So that was really fun. Uh, I mainly stuck to like, um, like intro classes. So like I didn't have too many. Uh, oh, oh wait no no I had I had this uh, astronomy sem seminar that I took uh, it was like current research in astrophysics and that was a really fun class you got to learn about like just not only like like cutting edge like what the cutting edge research on in like astrophysics is about but also like how like the logistics of astrophysics research works like how you get funding how you like project your image to to the public like all of, all of that and it, it was really interesting. Um, to, and, and we have like this simulation game where like basically we, we discovered the secrets of the universe in the span of about 40 years. Um, 40 years as in like game time, not real time. That'd be a bit weird. Great. And um, how'd you pick your majors? Did you guys know what you wanted to do coming into college? Um, yeah, just talk about your journey to deciding on a major. So, um... My 
I guess, path would be a little bit different. I've always known that I wanted to do theater. It's been my passion as long as I could remember. So that was just kind of like an easy an easy way for me to, to continue doing that. Um, but a lot of my friends didn't know what they wanted to do or they changed majors halfway through the year. And you can do that. You can absolutely change your mind. I mean, some people actually go to school as like exploratory studies, basically undecided, and then they decide there. Do not feel like you need to map out the entire rest of your career, the entire rest of your life before you even apply to college because it will change. Yep. Uh, I, I was very undecided my first year. So uh, I just, what I said to do was I spammed all the intro STEM classes because I knew I wanted to major in STEM somehow. Um, and I'm still kind of undecided. Yay. Um, no, I, I, I think they declared math, the math computer science joint major, um, mostly, which was mostly pressured by Yale financially cutting my aid by two thirds and ghosting me. Um, I will be anti Yale until they, they resolve that sometime in August, which is after the bill due date. I don't know how that works, but I'm getting off track. Um, if you don't know, yeah, it, it, you, at Yale, you don't have to declare your major for a while. I don't quite ex remember when. I think it was it's sometime during your second year. So yeah, you really do have a lot of time to just explore. I mean, sure, you have to get the general ed, uh, requirements out of the way, which I think the most annoying of which is like <clears throat> the three-semester language requirement if you haven't taken a language in high school. But um, yeah, you really do have a lot of time to explore and really like find yourself. I know it's cheesy, but like, you you do like get more of a feel for what you're interested in during during um, during your first year. Great, and when for the freshmen, uh, pre freshmen here who are selecting their classes now, um, do you recommend um, staying at an average workload, a course load? Um, and what how what an average course load looks like at your school? Is there a certain number of credits people should be taking and how much they can handle? So um, the average kind of course load, again, differs by major. But um, to be like a full time student, usually it's 12 units or up at my school. Um, I personally took 18 my first semester and it was it was more than I was expecting. Um, it's definitely doable, but I don't recommend kind of going over the like over that. Um, and again, schools like differ in how they define a unit and courses and everything like that. So that you'll have to like look into. But um, my spring semester, I took like 16 units. That was definitely more manageable. Liked that a lot more. And then this coming fall, I'll be taking 18 units again. Uh, okay. At uh, Yale, we differentiate by credits, which I think is like a one to three ish ratio. I, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Um, but yeah, uh, I think the recommended workload, uh, especially for your first year, is like four and four and a half for your first semester, because I think the saying is adjusting to Yale is your, your uh, is an extra credit, which I kind of disagree with. I, I took five and it was fine. Like, especially if you you, you like know you like the classes, like like you know to drop a class if you really like like if if you know like the threshold to to like drop a class right you you can't be scared to drop a class is is the real thing um but but if if you're like unintimidated by the class like f f like a bit over the recommended is fine um yeah every every t i remember every time like i i uh i was i was telling people i took five credits like they, they were calling me crazy <laughs> which like come on come on people can push themselves more yes thank you um i want to talk about your schedule more can you guys elaborate on it so how did you guys find the time to do your classes your ecs and other responsibilities um were you guys involved in anything at school just how did you balance everything together, the work, the academic part, and any other, any other thing that you were committed to? Yeah, so I think this honestly all goes back to time management skills. And that's, you know, a skill that you learn in college. Um, I personally spent, again, a lot of my time was in Google Calendar. So, like, my entire day would be planned out, my entire week would be planned out. And that really helped me academics-wise. 
I could see, okay, if I had this insane paper due in a week, and I knew that week I was going to be really busy with extracurriculars or rehearsals or anything like that, and I wasn't going to have time, maybe I should go ahead and start that paper now and finish it early. Um, So again, just find a system that works for you and make sure that you are keeping up on all of your academics because that comes first. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, just focus on classes. Don't, I mean, it it really is okay to like sleep through a lecture or two if you genuinely need to sleep. For example, your lecture is at 9 a.m. and it is currently 6 a.m. Like, you're not going to get much out of the class anyway if you sleep for two hours and then try to force yourself to stay awake through the class. Um, But... (laughs) Just, just try to avoid scenarios like that by, you know, planning ahead. I think we've talked about this. Just, like, make, make sure you have time for everything that you do. Um, to, to definitely know, yeah, when... Definitely know your limits. Don't, don't try to overwork yourself. Uh, all that. Can you elaborate on the limits? Um, what is too much? Um, I, mean, I mean, it shouldn't be, like impact like classes should not be impacting your every single aspect of your life you should try and avoid the point where like um you're sleeping you know fewer than six hours a day and you know complain and the entirety of your social interactions are complaining to other people about your classes like you you need a life outside of classes if anything that's important to iterate perfect thank you um and could you guys um, talk about the success resources at your schools? So how does your school su- support your academic and professional success? Absolutely. There are so many resources. Um, pretty much every single school that I've heard of has some sort of like tutor center. They have a math center or a writing center. Or even if it's just like the Disability Resource Center, if you have a disability and you need you know, time and a half for test taking, or if you need any sort of accommodation, schools will accommodate you. Um, The important thing, though, is that nobody's going to be holding your hand. No one's going to say, oh, you should, you know, go here and talk to this person and do this. It is very much on you. Um, So definitely, even just a simple Google search, if you say, you know, my school's math center or my school's writing center, um, that will come up with a ton of things. So I personally use the writing center a lot at my school, which is where you can submit your essays like for classes or for even personal projects, whatever you want. And grad students will review them and kind of tell you, oh, this is what I would take out. This is what I would put in. So definitely use your resources. Mm-hmm. There's so, so many resources at Yale too. Like, um, I mean, too too many resources are, like, separated into three, right? You have, like, academic stuff, you have professional development stuff, and you have, like, funding. Um, for, for, For academic stuff, go to office hours. Go to office hours. Please, for the love of God, go to office hours. They are so helpful. Sometimes they even basically, like, sort of give you the answers to piece sets. I did not go to office hours, and I fully regret it. I am going to office hours for my summer class right now, and it is so great. And uh, I get to, like, actually, you know, know my professor, um, and like, you know, figure out that he's a real human being <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes that human connection actually like helps, um, in terms of like, uh, like professional development, we do have a, an office of career development or something. Um, you can like, they do like resume reviews if you need like your resume reviewed as the name suggests. Um, they also have like a ton of resources as to like how to like apply for internships, like how to, I think they have like some referral program. Um, I'm not sure how that works. Um, yeah, there, there's also um, lots of funding if you want to do fun stuff over the summer, like for research. Um, there's like the first year, uh, ooh, I don't remember the full acronym for it, but um, it's called SURF. Um, yeah, you can apply for it after your first year. Like you get, you get I think it's like 90% of people get it. You get a couple thousand dollars to like just do research at Yale, or I, th- I think maybe elsewhere too. Um, yeah, and then and then there's like there's the summer experiences award, which is what I'm on right now because I waited way too late to apply to to um, to other funding sources. 
Um, that's nice because it, it was basically just a free four thousand dollars that uh, if you are on financial aid, Yale will give to you. It is non-competitive. Um, so that yeah, that's that's nice. Um, uh, hmm. I feel like there was something else I was going to mention, but I've forgotten it. So we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about the student life, and for those interested in sports, um, if you guys know anything about the sports culture, um, do you participate in it, or how exciting is it? I know the Yale Harvard game is pretty big. Um, I'm not sure if anything is at you, Arizona, but if you guys want to talk about the sports culture. Uh, so I feel like every school, you know, has a rival, um, Michigan and Ohio State. Sorry, Becca. But um, for U of A, the big game was U of A versus ASU because that's kind of like our state rival. Um, the USC UCLA game is huge. So sports culture is big, I feel like, at, you know, kind of bigger universities. Um, but if you also played sports in high school or if you just like to do it recreationally, there's also intramural, intramural sports, um, which is basically where a bunch of people can get together and, you know, play for fun. Um, so if that's something that you're into, definitely look into that. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'm not particularly involved in the sports team, but I do know, like, yeah, the Yale Hard game is really, really big. Um, like, parties all over the place. There's, like, a shuttle, free shuttle, free lunches to, like, get you to the game. Um, otherwise, like, mm, I think it really just depends on on what like kind of social circle you're in. Like, I I am a math CS major. I'm very like you know maidenless and not involved in sports. Like, <laughs> yeah, but, but there's definitely people who are into that kind of stuff. We also have intramural sports, which I think here are even more chill than just like normal sports. Like, y you have your classics, like you know, like football and soccer and all that. But like, also there's like even more chill stuff, like you know, pool. And like, um, the like, I think hacky sack even. I think I think that was that was an intramural sport. Anyway, those are really fun. Those are like you form a college with your residential. Uh, you you form a team with your residential college, and you just like play occasionally during the year, and it's really fun. And do you guys have any favorite activities like events um, beyond just sports? If you have anything else that's non-sport related. Um, a lot of that is going to come from like clubs and other extracurriculars that you find yourself in. Um, so like personally for theater majors, you know, there's certain traditions that we have and, you know, we all go see shows together and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, there's definitely stuff outside of sports. If you don't like sports, if that's not your thing, don't feel like your entire social scene is dead. Okay, so, sorry, I, I kind of zoned out during the question. Can you repeat it? <laughs> and a favorite activity or event at your school it doesn't have to be sports related it can be anything ah uh, yes 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 uh we had sprinkling and uh that was fun we had a, a few musical artists come come to college um do i remember the names i, I think japanese breakfast came here so did amine and a few others that, that was really fun it was like yeah it, it was just a great day um it was a weird day too uh, for reasons i will not get into but um yeah really fun uh, yeah, it, it was, it was free and the food was really nice too. Great. And we can watch the general part of this, the tips and advice. So do you guys have any tips for the incoming freshmen for about the first couple of weeks of college? Talk to everyone and go to everything. Um, that was the biggest piece of advice that I have for myself. And that's the biggest piece of advice that I have for you. You know, I met so many people the first night because I was in some random Snapchat group chat and they were like, hey, we're going down to the courtyard right now to meet people. Come down. So I went and I met a lot of people and it was actually really fun. Um, so honestly, put yourself out there. Don't be scared. People are in the exact same boat as you. Everything will be OK. Yeah. And, and I know it's, it's hard. I, I know, at least for me, it was really hard to like get myself to talk to people. Like even even though even though I knew I should talk to people, it was still hard nonetheless to make conversation because I am very socially awkward. So um, such a suggestion I have for that is just like try to always keep in mind like one or two talking points that you can just kind of go to at any moment. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's a sad thing to have to keep in mind, but like you know what you do you do what you got to do to like 
you know, have a normal conversation and seem human. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if, if you can get past that threshold to talk to people, like, yeah, talk to people and really, really just um, meet as many people as you can and you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. Great. And um, did you guys have any, did you guys have anything that you guys regret um, not doing before you came to college or you guys had regrets during your first year? Any regrets? Um, honestly, I feel like being here and being in, especially this AMA right now, you're going to be prepared. So I, again, I know that it's, anxious produce like it's anxiety producing and it's scary but um yeah i didn't really have any regrets i would just say put yourself out there like we've been saying mm -hmm. i mean i mean i think pre-college I, I think high school i i i should have taken more time to like you know enjoy being a like a child <laughs> i i know it sounds silly but like i get struck with the realization that like i i'm an adult now like my childhood is literally over by definition like i won't have the the the, the i don't know the, the comfort of home will, will never really feel the same i uh, i think that might also be spurred on by like my, my parents moving um during my first year of college which really sucked because like flying home for, for break like didn't really feel like flying home but uh, yeah, just just enjoy high school, even if you think it's not enjoyable. Like, don't 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 push yourself to like do too much. I think um, I, I, uh, on the admission side of things, I, I know this is about student life, but like, just just don't like t try to have some high school memories that you can you can retain. I think that's important. Uh, regarding during high during college, um, I mean, I I, I think. Yeah, I, the, my, my biggest regret is just not going to more events. I think I would have been happier that way. I think I, I prefer to just stay inside and stare at my phone for hours on end rather than just, you know, walking outside and touching grass and meeting people. And uh, that that is a big mistake that I do not want to make. Great. And for Kylie, um, as a transfer student um, that hasn't been on campus yet, um, have you already met people at your new school? Um, and do you plan to like keep in touch with your, your um, friends from your old school? Absolutely. Um, so again, being in the age of social media has helped so much. I mean, again, there's Instagram pages for my class for transfer specifically. There's Facebook groups. There's a Discord server. Like, I have met so many people already, um, and then I actually was on campus for um, my orientation, so I met a lot of people that way. Um, but my school, also USC, also does um, a lot of like alumni networking. I was able to meet a lot of people from my state, actually, who are going to school there this fall and everything like that. Um, as for keeping in touch with my friends from my old school, Definitely. I mean, again, with social media and everything like that, we have a Snapchat group chat together and everything like that. We talk literally every single day. So if you are thinking about transferring, I mean, it's up to you, you to maintain those relationships, obviously, but don't feel like everything will automatically disappear. Great. Um, give me a second. Um, did you guys have any, on the first day of school, did you guys have any feelings or thoughts going on? So what were you feeling and what was going on through your minds on the first day of school? Uh, first day of school is in like first day of classes or like move in? Um, both. Okay, cool. Um, move in, I think as Pi mentioned, I mean, it's kind of like this moment of what now? Like, wow, okay, I'm here. My parents left. Like, it's just me sitting in my room. Uh, am I allowed to curse? Holy shit. Um, it's, it's this really weird feeling. Um, but definitely just go out and meet people. I think being alone makes things ten times worse, and it's harder. Um, 
So definitely get yourself out there, things like that. Um, as for the first day classes, for me personally, uh, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm here, classes, it's kind of weird. Like this is the first time I'm taking college classes. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a feeling of excitement. So lean into that more than the nervousness. Yep. I, I think it's, it's just important to, uh, yeah, yeah, the, 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 that was my feelings. Just, yeah, I'm an adult now. I'm on my own. There's like, yeah, there is definitely a bit of sadness, right? Like, oh no, like I can't really enjoy being, I don't have like the innocence of being a kid anymore, which sucks. But like also you're your own person now, like you're, you're free. Yay. You're, you're outside, you're in, on your own in the real world. And I think you, yeah, d definitely embrace that freedom that you have now. Um, embrace like the fact that like, you know, you are what you make of, uh, yeah, co college is what you make of it, right? You, you have the choice of doing whatever you want. You don't have to stick your, to your stupid high school schedule where you have to wake up at 7 a.m. every day to go to high school with people you don't really like. Like, yeah, it, you, just embrace the freedom would be the, the one tip I have. Perfect. And um, how's the weather where you go to school? Does do, is it a big factor into you, how you plan your day? So how much does the weather um, on campus affect your day to day learning experience? And does it ever make you avoid extracurriculars one day or your daily routine? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I went to school again in Arizona and now I'm going to school in California and it is very hot. Um, so there were definitely times where, you know, I purposefully kind of scheduled my classes during the hottest times of the day so that I would be inside and in air conditioning. Um, I definitely like admissions wise chose schools that were on the West coast so that I didn't have to deal with snow. Um, but as for like the day to day life, I don't think that weather really affects that much. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that's just kind of your personal preference. If you don't want to be outside, don't go outside. Yeah. Here in New Haven, uh, you know, it's, it's typical New, New England weather. Um, uh, there's this thing called rain. I don't know, Kylie, if you've heard of it. Um, it, <laughs> it really, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it's actually, it's kind of a myth, uh, out where she was um but, but yeah like it, it that can really throw you to stay inside i mean walking out, around in the rain is not that nice unless i mean i mean okay definitely come prepared with like some some waterproof shoes like boots or something and then bring an umbrella and then like honestly walk and then like walking around in the rain is honestly kind of calming it's, it's pretty fun not many people are outside and you can just like kind of just like observe the the quiet world around you, and it, it is a very very peaceful, serene feeling that I would highly recommend. Um, but on other days where you have to go to class and don't have the time to you know enjoy life, um, you yeah, I mean, you just kind of have to deal with it. <laughs> I mean, especially on the really snowy days, that those really sucked. But um, yeah, just just. Oh, oh, yeah, and like eating. I mean, uh, my residential college, there's like a tunnel right to, like, in a tunnel right to the dining hall, so you don't actually have to step foot outside to eat to go to the dining hall, which is wonderful, especially when you're sleep deprived and hate life, and it's snowing outside, and you don't want to deal with that. Um, yeah. Right, and for those um, needing to work in this college, how did you guys find paid opportunity in college? Um, any type of paid work? Um, yeah, so I feel like a lot of opportunities also come from like career centers. Um, Pai kind of mentioned that briefly, but schools, people, companies want students from schools, mostly because they are cheap labor. Um, but I think it's important to use those resources. I personally have found a lot of like internship opportunities even during the school year through my career center. Um, so definitely look into that. I think it's important to do. Um, other than that, I mean, if you're not on a handshake, Indeed, stuff like that, that will also get you like paid opportunities. 
Mm -hmm. Don't have anything to add to that part. Um, but for, for student jobs, if, if you're looking to work a student job, like while you're taking classes, which is what I did. Um, I mean, I, I know Yale, we have our own like internal system for, for hiring students. And, um, that's nice because there's a lot of jobs that, um, I, I like the homework jobs where basically you just go there and do homework. And, um, it's great because you can get a, a small flow of income and then like, you know, you know, it, it's nice to just have a bit of extra money on hand. Um, but, and, and there's like plenty of these jobs to go around too. It's just, I think it's just Yale being forced to do like federal work study or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, check to see if your school has like one of those systems or, and, and definitely, yeah, take advantage of it. Great. And I know time is cutting short. I just want to finish this off on a good note. So what is a favorite memory you've had with your friends so far? Oh my gosh. Um, there are too many that I probably can't say on here, but um, <laughs> my favorite memory with my friends actually happened um, over the summer. So I was really lucky to meet my group of friends again by taking out the trash that morning. Um, but we went to San Diego together, all 12 of us. So that was a really fun opportunity. Um, but yeah, just, just make the most of it. Honestly, some of my favorite memories are just like all hanging out in our dorms together and just, yeah, hanging out. Yeah, same here. I don't think I can say a lot of my favorite memories, but um, uh, we had a New York trip with my friend group. That was fun. We went to like the, the math museum because I'm a nerd. Um, but we also like just walked around, went to Times Square. It, it was just a great time. And I don't know, there, there's, there's always these like little, you, you always have like time to just make, uh, at least in um, at least in New Haven, like it's close enough to New York that like you could in theory like go there every go to New York every weekend if you wanted to. Uh, I don't plan on doing that, but um, yeah, there's there's plenty of opportunities is what I'm trying to say to like just like go on small trips and then just like you know or, or just ha just have an outing and it, it's it's lovely. Okay, great. Thank you for your time. Um, so this is all the time we have today. Um, if you asked a question and you still want to answer, let me know. I'll find you the answer. I'll get you the answer. Um, but I want to thank everyone for showing up, for spending the hour with us. And yeah, so that's it for today. Um, us, we'll have more AMAs in the future. If you're interested in ever hosting one, we have opportunities. You can always let us know and we'll work it out with you. Um, but yeah. Thanks again. Um, have a good day or night.